Hello and welcome to BandDirector.com. My name is David Taylor. I teach percussion at Wayne State University and today we will be discussing some very basic techniques of uh, concert percussion, specifically the triangle and cymbals. Uh, we'll start first with the triangle. Um, we're going to start with the clip, which is a very important part of this instrument. The most important fact I want to point out about this is how short this string is. If it gets too long, the triangle is going to move too much. You'll have to chase it around to play it. So you want it very short so the triangle doesn't move. Uh, when we grip the triangle, you should put the index finger over the top, the thumb and back underneath, and then these fingers here will be used for muting the triangle. Um, our proper stance should be where this is more or less in front of our face. Our music stand can be right there and then hopefully the conductor right there so you can see exactly what's happening, see your music on the page and see the conductor. Um, now getting the best sound out of this instrument um, you need to know a few things. First of all our playing spots are going to be probably the top third of this area here or about a third in here. Every triangle is a little different so you have to experiment and find that triangle's sweet spot. Um, but it's usually going to be in one of those two spots. Um, now, striking the triangle, very important. We do not want the triangle to sound like a bell. And if you catch the beater to the triangle square, right on the side or right square like that, you're going to get a bell-like sound, more of a pitch. What you need to do is then angle your beater and then you'll get a better spread of all the harmonics I'll demonstrate. Here's that bell sound if we catch it square. We're hearing a pitch, but now... That is the beautiful sound of the triangle where all those harmonics are being heard. Another important technique that you'll be expected to do on the triangle is a roll. If you're playing up here, then your roll should be up here. If you're playing down here, then your roll will be in that corner. A quick exercise to make your rolls better, what I'll do is I'll mute the triangle and actually try to get a roll happening where I'm, I don't have the benefit of all that sound blending together. Therefore, when I take those muted fingers away, hopefully getting a good roll sound. So that's some basics of the triangle. Next, I'd like to talk about the suspended cymbal. First of all, your suspended cymbal should be flat. It, um, I'll notice sometimes in some bands that players will want to do it like their drum set and have it angled, but we want the cymbal to be flat uh, for sound reasons, so that when we're playing it, we don't get too much of, of a wobble or too much of a sound coming from the bottom. Cymbals are directional in their sound. Um, the next important thing is that try not to have any felts. A lot of cymbal companies will include extra felts in their cymbal stands. Don't feel obligated to put it on. It will cut out sound. We want as much sound as possible from this instrument. And finally, the most important thing is no timpani mallets on suspended cymbals. Even if the composer of a piece says cymbal with timpani mallets, it's because he just didn't know. Um, you'll ruin your timpani mallets, first of all, and you won't get as good of a sound out of the instrument. So preferably, you want to use some type of wound mallet, and in particular, a vibraphone mallet. It was made to produce sound from metal. So that would be your best bet. Now when rolling, you want to spread your mallets out across from each other. What this will allow you to have is control over the cymbal. If you're playing all in one area, especially as you get louder, that cymbal will tilt on you and you'll be chasing the cymbal all over the place. But if you're opposite of each other, the cymbal will stay in control. Uh, we don't have to roll very fast when we're playing a cymbal roll because the sound will connect itself. So you only want to go as fast as you need to to have that sound connect. Even single notes on the cymbal um, can sound really good if we use both mallets. Uh, 
One of the things that we can do to any metal instrument, uh, specifically you might remember uh, on the gong, uh, we would have to warm it up, get it vibrating, so that when we play it, it's ready to go. You get a, you get a quick uh, start to your sound. We can do the same thing on suspended cymbals. So before a single note or even before a roll, you can either kind of get it vibrating with the finger or with a mallet lightly. We don't want anybody to hear it. But then once it's vibrating, you usually get a better saw. Some basics about the suspended cymbal. Next, I'd like to talk about crash cymbals. There are many differences between uh, marching cymbal playing and concert cymbal playing. First thing I want to talk about is the strap and making the knot because it's a very specific knot and if you never had the chance or opportunity to learn it, you'll want to know because we never want the cymbal to go flying in the middle of an important concert. So, pull the strap through. North, north, south, east, west. I'm sure this knot has a name. I just call it the checkerboard knot, but I was never a Boy Scout. I take north and south, kind of go opposite each other, and now I'm going to go over, under, creating a checkerboard. These four leather pieces. And once you've done it a few times, knock it out pretty fast. So there it is in basic form. It hasn't been tightened. At that point, you've got to be just very careful and tighten each string a little bit at a time. Probably seeing the checkerboard happen already. You can press on that. I've seen people actually smack it just a little tighter. Keep pulling. And that knot will hold your cymbal. You might notice that I don't have any pad here. That is important for marching because we're holding the cymbals for long periods of time. Um, it would become painful, so you need the pad. But in concert playing, we don't want to mute all of that sound. So no pads for concert cymbal crashes. Um, finally, I want to talk about the motion that we're going to use. In marching percussion, we tend to play up. It's very visual and that's the whole idea for the marching cymbals. We want it to be visual. We want it to be a very spectacular effect when they make the crash. For concert playing, we're looking for a warmer crash, uh, maybe even a darker type crash. So most of the players will come down with their top cymbal. Ultimately, both cymbals will be moving, but my top cymbal is coming down as opposed to up. Now, in slow motion, what is going to happen is this symbol will hit about there and actually flam. We don't want them to come exactly together. It'll be kind of a thin sounding crash. We want that flam type of sound in our crash. Um, which brings me to another point, sometimes referred to as the dynamic curve. If I'm bringing that top symbol down, if I'm here, it'll be a very soft crash. If I change the angle of this left symbol to there, it'll be a little louder crash. If I change the angle even more, you get the idea. The more angle that left symbol is will determine the dynamic level of our crash. So before I play a crash, one final important point is holding these straps. What you don't want to do is have your whole hand on there for the same reason that we're not using symbol pads. We don't want to mute the sound of the cymbal. So you're going to grip very tightly, first of all, between your index and thumb, and then we're going to use this middle knuckle to actually rest the cymbal on. So really, the only parts of my hand touching the cymbal is this part of my knuckle and maybe a little bit of my thumb because I'm in there tight. So we have that balance point right there. So now we have nothing muting the cymbal. So there's our grip of the cymbals. So I'll demonstrate that dynamic curve for you. A 
I want to say thank you for tuning in to banddirector.com. I hope some of these techniques will help produce more beautiful sounds from the back of your ensemble, as well as uh, create some pride in the students when they make these sounds.